India is an ideal experimental field for prototypes that aim to break away from classic toilets. A symbol in itself here where the construction of millions of toilets has become a national priority and where ancestral practices are firmly rooted in the most disadvantaged layers of society. There are only four toilets in this shanty town, which has 15,000 inhabitants. And each morning, there are just too many people, so I always go to the toilet outside. The World Health Organization estimates that 80% of endemic illness in the country is associated with the lack of hygiene and dirty water. At present, 800 million Indians have no access to toilets. I've always done this. I feel better when I'm outside. My intestines work better. I don't like being enclosed. And there are smells in the toilets as well. Here there's fresh air and you can sit down naturally. The problem in India is that there was no culture of using toilets for hundreds and hundreds of years. They used to open defecation and it becomes a mentality that this is normal. Now to change this, you can build the toilet, but you have to change the behavior to use the toilet. Various NGOs, as well as UNICEF, are launching communication campaigns with a funny side on Indian television channels and mobile phones. One of the great unfinished goals of Gandhi was to end the practice of going to the toilet in the open air. At the launch of Operation Clean India, the head of government promised the building of 110 million toilets. Still today, our mothers and sisters have to go outside to relieve themselves. Is that dignity for women? In rural areas, going to the toilets is a nightmare for women. Their modesty leads them to distant spots which are isolated and sometimes dangerous because of wildlife. Women who don't have toilets in their houses have a lot of trouble. For example, at night, if they want to go to the toilet, they're scared to go out. Outside, a lot of women get attacked, often by men, so it's very dangerous. When there are toilets at home, there's no need to go out, and we're safe. At the start of her marriage, Anita didn't have a toilet. Putting one in was expensive and very badly looked upon in the neighborhood. A deeply rooted belief in India is that toilets are a dirty and impure place that offend the divinities that watch over the household. If my husband hadn't built toilets, I would have gone back to my parents. So I would never have had a family or children. And all that life. And all that life. My life would have been wasted for him as it would have been for me. Anita's struggle to have a toilet was reported by many papers and made into a film. The film with a star-studded cast called Toilets A Love Story was enormously successful. It brought in 2.16 billion rupees at the box office, which is more than 28 million euros. And more importantly, it had a big effect on ordinary people, especially with women who identified with Anita's character. This story is the real story of our life. Yes, it's true. They made a very nice love story about toilets. When people see the film, they'll be inspired. About toilets? 
about women who are still suffering from this. The neighbors always thought I was a strange woman who went back to her parents because of the toilets. And when I came back after making my husband build a toilet, the neighbors said, if she could do that, we can do it too. And little by little, all the village had toilets. Anita's story showed the way. But there's still a long way to go. Traditional Indian society is structured by a hereditary caste system that determines the trades that can be practiced. The untouchables, the lowest social caste, are responsible for cleaning toilets. Our Prime Minister said, Our Prime Minister said, toilets are more important than temples. Than temples. Than temples. Hmm. So, let's go. Temple. Thank you, thank you. For 40 years, Dr. Patak has been called the toilet guru and has devoted himself to changing the image of toilets and that of the untouchables. Gandhi gave importance, Gandhi gave importance to toilets. He said he, he said he wanted independence for India, India later on. Later on clean, clean India, India first. first. Everything to do with excrement is impure, and it cannot be manipulated except by the untouchables, the caste which is the most discriminated against and despised of India. Today, his NGO reclassifies the untouchables, giving them back their dignity. They are the persons who... They are the people who used to clean human feces till 2003. Now they've become free. Now they don't have to clean human feces. Now they get education. In spite of recent legislation which forbids old-fashioned toilets where the tank can only be emptied by hand, they exist still. And it is still untouchable women who empty them. Devi empties the family toilets of this house once a week. I've done this job since I was very little. I was only this tall when I started. Each tank only brings in a few cents. Sometimes the mistress of the house, with the tips of her fingers, offers a snack. I always keep my distance. The untouchables have no right to go to the temple, nor, worst of all, the right to use the public baths. So this system or this practice? This system and this practice continued for 5,000 years till the British came to India. British came to India. They put up... They put up a sewage system in Calcutta in 1870. But the technology... But the technology was so costly, it was not possible to end the practice of manual cleaning by untouchables. I had to find out... I had to find a solution to the technological problem and also the social problem. Social problem. Several decades back, Dr. Patak imagined and developed revolutionary toilets, simple, inexpensive, and which didn't need to be connected to a sewer network. There are, there are two pits. One is used at a time. When the first one is full, switch over to the other one. The contents of the first tank then was used as fertilizer for crops. The, technology the technologies which I invented, they're all free from patents, so the poorest or the poor person can utilize them, can get the use of our technology. The facilities of our technology. The unit cost of installation varies from $20 to $500 according to its complexity. The most developed produced by fermentation in a cylinder, enough biogas for a household's needs. Hello. Dr. Patek tirelessly promotes the construction of public toilets accessible to all. 
first public toilet. The first public toilet was opened in 1974, and people used to joke, who will pay for the use of toilets? But now, 20 million use them every day. If we have proper facilities, clean bathrooms, nobody minds paying a small coin. Sulab, the NGO founded by Dr. Patak, manages around 10,000 public toilets. 20 million units have already been built, either by the Indian state or private organizations. The objective is to build 100 million, at the same time experimenting with new concepts. This is the e-toilet e app. People can easily find where the nearby e-toilets are. And also the devotees can, like, upkeep and maintain the e-toilets through this app. E-toilets can be connected to three options. One is normal sewage-like, it can be connected. The second one is we have a dedicated on-site treatment system which is using anaerobic treatment. As its name indicates, anaerobic treatment takes place without oxygen, like that which happens in a living digestive tube when it decomposes food. And the third one is we're in the pilot stage of integrating a Caltech reactor to the e-toilet for recycling of water with the help of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Eight percent of e-toilets are trying to integrate the Caltech system. This system works with solar power, and also in the future, we will be trying to produce electricity as well as hydrogen from this reactor. What we need to do now is to ask people to see the toilet as a status symbol, like a Louis Vuitton handbag. We have to drive the demand, and then we have to make them use the supply. The industrialization of the production of sewerless toilets and the development of technical processes will bring about a fall in prices which one day can be brought within the reach of the most modest households. India will then have the hygienic revolution that Gandhi dreamed of. Some regions of Africa lack both water and the necessary infrastructure for treating waste. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has helped to develop the first mini water treatment plant called the Omni Processor. In many African towns, but also in Asia, waste falls into old fashioned tanks, which have to be emptied regularly with more or less mechanized methods. Up till now, the waste collected was often thrown into the rivers. Installing an Omni processor treats and converts the waste from 100,000 toilets in Dhaka, Senegal. Here we transform every day 12 tons of fecal matter taken from emptying solid waste into ashes used to make biofertilizer, steam, to produce electricity and distilled water, which can be used in motor vehicles. I am very impressed with this solution we're seeing here. It generates electricity, it generates clean water. It will grow to every corner of the earth that needs it because it makes money every day. It's water. Solid waste is heated to more than 1,000 degrees Celsius. Organic pathogens are destroyed and the steam produced drives turbines, which generate the electricity of the complex. After exiting the turbines, distilled water is collected. According to its designers, the machine can thus produce around 11,000 litres of drinking water per day from an abundant and inexpensive resource. The toilet revolution is happening. Technical processes keep improving and industrialists can see there is money to be made in a sector that is freeing itself from the preconceived ideas that stopped its development.
and we're just trying to work out which company um, has the best skills that match what the nanomembrane toilet needs. So um, I'm very confident that in the future the nanomembrane toilet will be able to be manufactured in, in its millions and uh, deliver safe sanitation to the people that need it the most. The UN Sustainable Development Programme has as an objective guaranteed access to toilets for all by 2030. I'm very optimistic that by 2030, India will have no more open defecation. China will have all flush toilet with good treatment. Africa has high priority on toilets and all of European funding will help this change. Jack Sims WTO is raising more and more funds to finance ambitious projects. Research is moving ahead in every direction. Scientists actually didn't understand exactly what it was that made toilets smell bad. Women need to deal with the subject of toilets because toilet education for children is transmitted mainly by women all around the world. And I hope that thanks to that education and training, we'll end the taboo. Anita has been seduced by modern toilets. Wow! Nowadays, with new generations and the change in mentalities, new technologies, we'd like everyone to go to the toilet organically, okay? And Dr. Patek has produced a Bollywood clip for Toilets for All. Hasketikado, 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 ji. Hasketikado, 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 ji.